Ice cream lovers, welcome to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Yeah, I know, I know you're searching through the old uh, thumbnails and looking for the WB. W B W's. Uh, thank you to our episode sponsor, Dippin' Flavors, another local St. Louis company based right here in uh, downtown St. Louis. They're shipping toppings, flavors, all sorts of ice cream related products all over the country. Dippin' Flavors down. Dippinflavors.com. Let me tell you, if you're in an area where you don't have a specialty distributor, Dippin' Flavors may be the solution. Dippinflavors.com, link is down below. Tell them you said hello. Tell them I said hello. We are obliged uh, to run the jingle. So, Madeline, let's uh, do the jingle. A one and a two and a... Here we are at the board. Like Bob Wednesday is here once more. Yeah, we'll have some fun. Do some pins. Spending time with our friends. Uh, now, a bit of... Uh, background information behind the curtain so to speak we don't actually play I know this may seem to be a surprise to you we don't actually play the whiteboard uh, Wednesday jingle when we're filming this I'm dancing to nothing basically but you'll note how well I know the jingle in my mind but I'm basically choreographing different steps and shapes and emotions to the beat of the song Anyway, let's talk a little bit about how much space do you need to, to actually make your own ice cream. And when you're looking at different concepts, so you've got soft serve and custard that actually uh, are both ready to use products. So really you're not making product per se. I mean, you are, but you're formulating a mix, but it goes straight into the machine, which is generally right out front of the store. Uh, and you don't need a big production space. But when you are making your own premium ice cream, you do actually need a room. And that room is generally called a batch room. So your batch room is where you're actually making your ice cream products. And I'm seeing on the monitor here that I could actually make this a little bit bigger. So, with the magic of Sheen. Sheen! Isn't that amazing? That's the power of Shing. Okay, so you've got your batch room here, and this may back on to your retail space here, uh, but there are a couple of things that you're gonna need to worry about or take consideration of. The first of which is your actual batch freezer. Uh, it's where you're basically making your premium ice cream, your sorbets, your gelatos. So that's gotta be pride of place. And it's always good to have that somewhere in the middle. No, who's left their phone on? Hello? Anyway, so somewhere in the middle, I'm not talking about the middle of the room, you wanna, you wanna keep as much space in the middle open. So somewhere in the middle, not in a corner, because the, your batch freezer is your focal point of the room. It's where all of the products are being made. So secondly, you may have a blast freezer or a hardening cabinet. Let's call it a BF. BF. Typically they're close together. Here with our production facility over the back here, we have batch freezers and then at the end of the row we have our blast freezer. So it's a nice easy transition from here to here. And then you've got to look at storage. So are you going to have the same storage in the same room? You might have a large, uh, maybe a three door uh, freezer. This may be the doorway to perhaps a walk-in freezer outside. But basically you're batching, blast freezing and storing. Now it's always handy to have some ingredient racks. Um, so you might have some shelving down here that has your powdered mix, your toppings, your extracts, different things like that. And maybe another refrigerator over here uh, to have all of your, maybe your mix, uh, some of your refrigerator toppings. Now the best thing you can do in this space is to leave as much space in the middle of the room open because your best friend is going to be a stainless steel table or maybe two on wheels that you can basically formulate and move around while you're making product. So let's say that you're running uh, the cookies and cream in the batch right now. You've just 
pull that out. But while that's freezing, you're going to the fridge and maybe getting ingredients for the next product and staging it right here. You can even move this table over to the fridge, get everything out, stage it, and bring it back over to the batch freezer. You may even prefer to put it alongside here. So a lot of times you want to keep as much space as you can open. Another thing that is really helpful is utility carts. They call them dunnage carts, but utility carts can be either stainless steel or plastic, uh, and they are really good for just moving product around. If I'm uh, packing pints on this table, I can load them on the utility cart, put them in the blast, or bring them over to the storage freezer. So the idea is your production space needs to be as flexible as it can be around these focal points of the batch freezer and the blast freezer. So coming back to our initial uh, comment here, how much space does this need? Well, I mean, obviously it depends on the volume of product you're putting out, the size of containers. If you've got a 30 uh, bucket case, you're going to need at least storage for 100 buckets. So is this big enough? Do you need more space? If you're selling it in gelato pans and you've only got a 12 or a 16 pan case, you can do it with less space. I would say that generally uh, about 300 square feet or more is the general usage. 300 square feet is what this place could be. Now, could you get away with less than that? Absolutely, it's just a little bit more tight and maybe you're not using a four foot table, maybe using a three foot table. Can you do with more? Absolutely. I feel as though a batch room is kind of like having a, a single car garage and you've kind of got so much going and you're growing, so you need to buy a house within a two car garage and you think, oh great, I've got all this space now and then you basically fill it up and then you need to buy a house with a three car garage well that's what your batch room is like so if you're just starting off maybe 300 square feet would be the goal if you could get four or five hundred square feet then you're building for future growth and perhaps having this be the uh, production facility for three or four five ten locations even hope that answers your question it's a question that we get a lot how much room am I going to need to uh, to run this batch 300 is the average before or a little bit less a little bit more also do Hope that helps. Thank you for Dippin' Flavors for sponsoring this video. Look, if you have any questions, problems, concerns about the ice cream business, about growing your ice cream business, or even getting into the ice cream business, you've come to the right place. You can leave a comment down below. You can like us. You can go to scoopschool.com. Uh, in fact, let's do that. So up here is a subscribe button. You click on that. Down here is a pretty good video that I think you're going to watch. And here, it's going to take you straight to scoopschool.com. I'll see you there. Keep on scooping, and we'll see you in the next video.